Welcome to this video, thanks for watching, I hope it's of some help. My name's Barry Beckham. One of the more creative aspects of PTE AV Studio is masks. Now at first glance, a mask may look just a little more complicated than it actually is. So let's take a look. Here we are in the main screen of PTE AV Studio. I'm going to select just one image to start. I think this skyscape will do nicely. So I'm going to drag that down into the slide list. Once it's there, we can open up the objects and animation screen. Now there's a couple of ways we can select a mask. We can go up to the extreme top left of the window to that yellow M and click there. But if we already had our cursor down in the bottom right corner, perhaps working with images and videos here, we can do so here exactly the same. Just right click, choose add, and there's the option for a mask. Once we select the mask, we're asked which one of the three we want. We're going to look at all three, starting with add mask template. Now this add mask window does offer us a fair degree of control over the masks that we can create. But first up, let me just click OK to select this default soft round mask. And we can see it's a soft round mask and we can also see that the center of the mask is white. And it's the white part that's going to be masked and invisible allowing other images to show through. Where the mask is black is going to show through the image we can currently see in the objects and animation screen. So let me click OK and you'll see the mask appear down at the bottom right. So the white area of this mask has created that large transparent circle. The black areas have allowed the image we selected to show around the edge. If I were to select my image just for a moment I'm going to use shortcut keys here to change the stacking order. I'm going to use control and page up. It's going to move BD8, which is the skyscape, to the top of the stack. And of course it's doing probably what you would expect it to do. Now it's covering up the entire mask container and everything that's within it. This in effect is a nice shortcut. To change the stacking order on the bottom right corner, hold the control key and use page up, page down. On this occasion, one touch takes it back to where it started. A mask is made up of three parts. The mask container, the mask stencil and the mask content. The mask container is really just a frame and we've looked at frames in a previous video. The mask stencil contains the mask and in our case we can see the mask we selected. It's a circle and we can see it's soft edged. At the moment we don't have a picture in the mask content. So a mask is simply a black and white image and where the mask is white it allows another image and I should have said previously a video or object to show through but we do have to place that image or video into the mask content. So let's do that next. We'll need to select the mask content and we can either go up to the top left and select the icon on the right to add an image but considering we're working down in the bottom corner it's more convenient to right click, add an image from here and the image I'm going to select is my cruise ship here. Let's select that and it'll appear in the center. Now it's not unusual to create a mask and then when we place the image inside the mask realize that the mask is not quite the right shape. We can adjust the shape when we first select it but there's also a fair degree of opportunities here. For example if I go to my mask stencil, the mask itself, the circle, you can see it's outlined above. So what I could do here is perhaps adjust the shape of that soft circle in the middle. Remember it's white on the mask. Now given the shape of the ship it may be a good idea if I go up to my zoom options here and I uncheck the chain link here which breaks apart the connection between the width and the height. 
So if I were to put my cursor into the zoom X and I hit the down arrow, I can make my circle X shaped but sort of in a vertical way. Or if I use the up arrow, I can extend it out and I can match nicely the ship. Now what we need to remember is that we can animate any or all aspects of this mask. We can animate the mask stencil, the mask content and of course the mask container. You can appreciate that these options open up a lot of creative possibilities but it does require just a little experimentation. Choosing the right combinations of images or video that you find visually appealing. As always, if we have the need to do so, we can go to the mask container. We can go way above my cursor and open up the properties section because up here we can change the name that we see in the bottom right corner of this screen. And sometimes if we're using more than one mask, which is a distinct possibility once we get creative, then we may want to change the name to be able to identify each one individually. Now just before we leave this first mask option I'd like to return to it very briefly and to do that I've just cleared the decks and opened a new image into the objects and animations screen. If we go to the masks to do exactly what we did previously and add a mask template I just selected the default circle but we do have options here. We get the opportunity via the style to change from a circle to a rectangle. We get the opportunity via the size in pixels to adjust the width and height in register if they're locked and we can break that apart if we wish and use sliders to do something else. But we can do most of this using the animation tab on the right hand side. We also have control of the width of the blur in our mask from nothing to quite a lot and also the corner radius. If I take the blur off again you can see the effect of that. We can go back to an absolute square. So quite a few options here if you want to choose them but just bear in mind that you also have the ability to change what you've selected. Sometimes I feel it's better to do that when you're actually viewing the images you intend to show and in that case I tend to move over to the animation tab on the right hand side but that's just a personal way of working. As you can see by the changes on screen I have started a new project all I've done so far is added a blank at the start of my new project. I'm going to select my blank and open up the objects and animation screen. Whether we right click down in the bottom right corner or we go up to the mask option here. The second option we had was to add a mask image or video. We can use any image or video to provide us with a mask. So let's select that option next and the image I'm going to select as my mask is image 4. This one here. I'll click to open that. Now these options are really good for special effects but as before I found that we do require just a little experimentation with different images and video but of course that's all part of the fun. So let's go down to the bottom right corner select the mask content, right click, choose to add an image and the image I'd like to use is this one here BD007 and when I apply it it gives quite a nice blend between the two images chosen. Now remember even here we can animate any part of the mask. We can animate the mask container we can animate the mask stencil, in our case it's BD004 and of course we can animate the image that we've placed within the mask BD007. Now perhaps an opportunity here is to use the mask as a derivative 
because if I were to close this window and come back to the slide list, perhaps a nice image to follow this one would be the original. Maybe a nice gentle slow fade over four or five seconds, depending on the music we're using, of course, but we could create some very good effects. Now I'll just put my cursor on the first image and press play here, but bear in mind we're not going to get a really good result here while I'm recording a screen capture, but we'll get a flavour of how it's going to work. Here I have a completely new project or a new example and to save a bit of time I've opened it up directly into the objects and animations screen. It's exactly the same mask we selected just a few moments ago except that instead of using a still image as the mask here as you can see by the highlight I'm using a video and you'll see how the video moves in a moment or two. In the mask content well, you can see the young lady sitting on the ground looking into the distance, and I've included her. So if I put my cursor over to the left, we can press play and get a feel for how these two work together. As you can see, I brought you back into the slide list here. The image I have highlighted is the one we was looking at a few moments ago in the objects and animation screen because here we can see in the mini player above the effect of what we've done with our mask with the image that comes next or in our case what I've used first of all is another copy of the video so let's run that first let me put my cursor on the first slide drag it back to that point and press play so we can see that nice gentle movement of the plants and then the gentle fade onto the video and it looks reasonably attractive to the eye let me stop that and I'll just drag that image back and we'll go back to the start and we'll have a look and see how that looks this time of course the foliage is going to fade away leaving the young lady and that looks pretty good too now here we are with another new project. I've just added a blank to the timeline with the shortcut keys Alt S. I've selected it and I'm going to go back into the objects and animation screen straight up to the top left. Click to select a mask but this time we're going to add a blank mask. Now you can see exactly what we get which is exactly the same as before but of course we don't have a mask stencil because we haven't chosen one yet. This option allows us to add and remove masks, images and video as many times as we wish. Now we can create masks ourselves if we use an image editor. I'm going to demonstrate this in Photoshop, but it's going to be much the same procedure in almost any image editor you may have. So here we are in Photoshop, I need a new canvas, file new is the way to do it here that's the size I want 1920 1080 once I've got a blank square or oblong created I'm going to bring up my rulers I'm going to speed this up by using shortcuts Control R will do that and I'm going to drag out a guide from the left hand side and it'll snap to the center once I've done that I'm going to select my rectangular marquee tool click and drag which will also snap to the guide and I can flood this side with white. White is my foreground colour so Alt Backspace there I have a mask. Now I need to save this mask twice. I've already done it once and I've called it Mask 001 just a simple JPEG at compression level 6. Then I'm going to go to my image image rotation 180 degrees File, Save As, same location, this time I'm going to call this Mask 2. With the mask made, I'm going to go back into Pictures to Exe. So why did I create two different masks? Well, I think we can demonstrate the answer to that. 
I've opened up a new project. All I've got is one blank created with Alt S. I've opened up the objects and animation screen. I'm going to click the mask option and we're going to add a blank mask. If I go directly to it and pick up my mask stencil, I'm going to right click, choose to add an image, but the image I'm going to add is the one that I called mask one. In the mask content, I'm going to select an image. So I can right click the mask content, choose add an image, and I'll choose the one at the top left. Now we can see how the mask, which is white on the left hand side, is only allowing the boat picture to show on the left hand side. And of course what we could do here is select the mask container and change its name. Just to keep things easy to view, maybe we'd go to the properties tab and maybe we'll call this left and the next one when we create it of course we'll call it right. And of course we can click this little arrow here and lock everything inside of the mask container. What I'm going to do next is to do exactly the same but select the other mask. Let me go through that. Let's click into the box at the bottom right to make a start. Right click and select the same mask. In the mask stencil, now I'm looking to add an image, but the image needs to be the one I called mask2. And in the mask content, of course, right click, add an image, and we're going to put the same image in there. And I'll go straight to the mask container and rename that to, if I can see my keyboard, I'm sitting in a darkened room. Have I got that right? No pun intended. Yes, I have. Let's tuck that away as well. So there we have the two masks, but what we're viewing on screen, it just looks like one complete image. Now don't worry too much if you can see a line down the center because sometimes that happens when we're viewing images at a small size like this. If I was to take you to the top center of the screen and look at this briefly at 100%, you can see we can't see the join. So I'll go back down to 50% so we can see everything. But what we're going to do now is we're going to animate both the left and the right hand side of the mask but we're going to do it in its entirety we don't have to touch anything that's within the mask now we can just use the mask container what I've just done to accommodate the animation we're about to make is I've increased my slide duration from the default to 15 seconds so I've got 15 seconds from the extreme left hand side of the timeline to the right hand side. What I need to do is to place a keyframe around the five second point. So I can just right click and add a keyframe and I can use keyframe time if I need it precise. Sometimes it's useful, especially when you need to line up one keyframe with another. Then I can choose to do the same with the left one. I could hold the control key and see both together. So I could right click and add a keyframe there. This one will snap into place now. It snaps into place using the keyframe above. So now we've got to decide where the two images are going to start their animation. Now I want to keep this fairly simple, but if I select the right side at the starting point, and if we go up to the rotate Y, you can see the sort of effect we can have. So let me bring this right the way around to well you can see the value I've got minus 76 there if we were going to put the same sort of movement into the left hand side then this value would need to be 76 so if I go down and select the first keyframe of the left side then this value I know to be identical doesn't have to be for creative purposes but here I'll keep it that way you can see exactly what I've done. 
Now, I've got a bit of a problem here in that the whole thing is rather too large. So what I'm going to do is wrap the left mask and the right mask up in a frame. And I'm just going to control the zoom size with a frame that's going to encompass all. While I've got them both selected then, I can choose right click and cut, right click again and add a frame, select the frame, right click and paste. There we are straight back to where we was a few moments ago but now if I just select the frame you can see it does become a little easier to just zoom the image down. I'm not sure where I want it, but that's the beauty of having the frame. I can adjust it as often as I need to. So let me select the other two just so we can look at the keyframes. No real reason apart from pure interest. So at the second keyframe, what I want to do is to open the image up. So I've got to go to the rotate and make sure I turn on those options. And I've got to go to the other one and do the same. Now I can see my image is a little bit small, so maybe I'll go back to my frame here and I'll add another keyframe there. If I put one at this point and make that five seconds too, then maybe we could have the frame starting at that point, but by the time it gets to this point, it's just a little bit bigger. So we can nicely present our image on screen. Let's say for the sake of this exercise, something around there. Now this animation is going to start hidden in the transition of the image on screen. So I need to add speed options to all three of these keyframes. And the speed option I'm going to need I suspect is going to be slow down. So way up to the top right I've got to go to the zoom controls for the frame. Animation speed, slow down. Sometimes I find it a good idea to add the same speed into all of these. So if I change my mind and start to experiment, then I've got the speed options in place. If I select this one, I need to do exactly the same. It's a rotate option here though, not a zoom. So add a modifier, animation speed, slow down. And once again, finally for the last one. Then we can have a look and see how our animation looks. So with the cursor at the start, we can press play. And it comes to a nice gentle stop. That looks okay to me. So let's have a look at just changing things slightly to bring this video to a close. I don't need to select all of those. I only had them selected so you could see all of the keyframes. We need to go to frame 1 to make a few changes and we also need to go to the keyframe that starts the animation. And I'm going to put a couple of variations in this to see how they affect the presentation. I may put a pan, I may put a rotate. So it's not going to be a bad idea I think if I go up to the modifiers and add the same speed. Even though I've not actually added any of these effects yet, adding a speed is not going to hurt and it's there when I need it. So I'll choose slow down for all of those because what I could do is maybe decide to zoom out a little bit more. I could decide to rotate it a little bit. I could decide to pan it left and even up a bit. You can see we've got lots of options here. Do remember that we've got to go to the second keyframe because some of those options are not turned on. If they were turned on then the image would be fair or four square on screen and it isn't because we haven't turned on the pan we've introduced or the rotate and as soon as we tick the boxes there you can see it's back in place put the cursor at the first keyframe press play there you can see the differences we can make the rest is up to you now as you can see here I brought you back to the main screen of PTE AV Studio and the slide list and to give you a feel for how this is going to work I've just put an image before our animation and one after so although it's not a great idea for me to give you a full screen preview 
while trying to record a screen capture. I'll give it a whirl here and in a moment I'll go up to the top right and press preview. But what I'm going to do is to put all three of these images into a slide style. So all you've got to do is import the slide style. If you right click your timeline and you add a blank slide, go to your styles and themes. Masks is the one you're looking for and I've just called it Demo 1. So when you click Demo 1, you'll be able to bring this up in your own copy of PTE AV Studio and you can see it in its full glory so to speak. So let me just delete those three. I'll put my cursor back at the start, go up to the top right and we'll have a preview. Now one of the things you may notice is I've included a background behind my picture and I've added a thin dark line around the edge. We can add these embellishments to improve the presentation we're looking for. We could even add text as well, and of course at some stage it's going to leave the screen to reveal the next image. Now once we have our masked animation to bring the image onto the screen to present it, then we can do the same to remove it. So I've just added those refinements, so let's press preview and we'll just watch that. There's the preceding image. I call this my book style because it opens up like a book but of course you could go the other way as I do at the end here. When it leaves the screen the two sides will fold the other way and drift off the top right. And when you see it in connection with the next image and the transition it looks rather nice. Now I'm running into the age old problem of anyone who makes tutorials. How do you encompass everything you want to say, but keep the video to a duration that people are willing to sit through it? And I think we're just about reaching the limit. So to quickly bring this video to a close, I'll say that we can also add text into a mask. Now the way I have achieved that here is just to select the background image, the seascape, into the slide list, open that up into the objects and animation screen here. Go up to the mask option and select the third of the three, add a blank mask. Then down at the extreme bottom right, instead of putting an image or a video into the mask stencil, when we right click and choose add, you can see you've got an option there for text. So I placed my word text into the mask stencil and then of course using the mask content, we can add another image or in fact a video. So as you may appreciate here there's so many different options we could be making demos all day and all night. If you'd like to download this video to keep on your desktop you can do that from my website. If you're watching on YouTube please consider giving me a thumbs up if you feel the video warrants that of course. Also consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed when I post another video. Thanks for watching.